So you might ask, how do I get started? As with any significant change in your system, the first thing we suggest is backing up your altitude and all of its presets. Doing so is quite simple. Insert a FAT32 formatted USB stick in the back of your altitude and then save each of the things you can save in the resulting VNC screen. Place all of these saved items in a single folder on that USB stick. You can also easily back up your altitude using the Trinov macOS app. By simply going to the device top menu and selecting machine backup or pressing command S. Once your backup is complete, update the software on your altitude to access the new waveforming features. With waveforming, you must declare and drive each subwoofer with a discrete output channel. While we recommend that all subs also be identical, there is some flexibility on this point. However, all the subs must have identical signal paths with the same settings to avoid disturbing the algorithm. For example, if some have their own DSP while others do not, the differing latencies will introduce severe compromises. Using identical subs with identical settings is your best option since they will behave the same when given the same signal. Once all the subs are connected to their individual outputs and amplifier channels, you need to declare each in the speaker declaration page as individual subs and route them to the correct physical outputs of your altitude. Waveforming is not part of the basic setup wizard, as it is a more advanced process that might confuse new people to our platform. So first you will need to do a manual calibration to use waveforming. Among other things, this lets you see if there are any obvious problems that need to be addressed first. You can use either the setup wizard or do it manually as you prefer, and need only the single reference measurement to ensure everything is okay. First, and most important, mute your processor before selecting the microphone input or turning on the mic itself. Forgetting to do this could create a feedback loop that could easily damage your speakers and your ears. It is now safe to select the appropriate microphone input, which you can do so on the Home Select page without leaving the gear menu, then return to calibration. Leave the microphone off until the altitude tells you to turn it on. If you haven't already done so, load your microphone's individual calibration file and select it for both your first measurement and as your default microphone for all subsequent measurements. Your first measurement should be the reference one, taken at the reference seating position. As always, carefully orient the Trinov 3D microphone so it is rotated and straight up and down, so the red LED on one side of the cylinder points to the dead center of the screen, presumably where the center channel is. Then take a complete measurement, watching to see if there are any issues with any of the speakers. For example, you should ensure that the crest factor is adequate for all speakers. This is a strong indicator of the quality of any measurement and therefore essential, and can usually be accomplished with a test level of about 80 dB SPL. It is also a good idea to do a quick compute and to check the measured delays and crest factors for all speakers. You might also want to look at the optimizer graph to ensure that nothing looks odd. If you see anything that seems unreasonable, now is the time to figure out what is happening. For example, some subs have their own built-in DSP capabilities. All your sub settings should be the same or turned off entirely. It may show up in one of these numbers or graphs if you missed one. 